I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykers, retired. The story we are about to bring you is one of extraordinary heroism. The USS Barb was one of the most aggressive submarines in World War II. In fact, she ranked number three in the amount of enemy tonnage sent to the bottom. She had a fighting crew. In fact, a crew that wouldn't quit fighting. Here is their story. The USS Barb wrote several new chapters in submarine history. In doing so, she resorted to almost every type of warfare. From bold surface attacks to riding dangerously into shallow waters and bombarding shore installations. brung up the unbelievable toll of more than 90,000 tons of shipping. Our story begins when the pirates of the China Sea, as the Bob's crew was called, topping off one of her spectacular patrols. Operating in dangerously shallow waters, they were in search of a convoy reported to be hugging the coast. The Bob skipper was Commander Eugene B. Flucky of Washington, D.C. Lieutenant William M. Walker from Miami, Florida was the Barb's first lieutenant. The ship's top petty officer was Paul G. Saunders, chief of the boat. His hometown was San Diego, California. Well, all them meatballs and no spaghetti. How well, come they got you working a swab, Jackie boy? Well, the old man caught me skylarking on the bridge again. How do you always manage to get into trouble? Well. I'll tell you, Chief, it's, uh, well, you see, actually, um, well, I don't know. I get up in the morning and, uh, there I am, in trouble. Well, you better get that extra duty worked off. You know, Scuttlebutt has it we're going to get leave right after this patrol. Leave? Say, how soon before we head back? Well, we still got ten fish left in the tubes. You know the old man ain't going to leave until we find a home for him. Ah, sure leave. May I have this dance back? Oh, thank you very much. Yes, I do. Oh, you do have a lovely complexion, my dear. Yes, oh, you dance divine. Yes, you do. Oh, thank you. Ah. Ah, Lucienne, I waited six months for this leave. I've seen Lucienne. I'd rather take the swab. Thanks. Holy smoke. Look at this, Mr. Walker. Mm -hmm. Looks like a whole flock of ships right next to the coast. Right. Notify the captain. We spotted the convoy right up against the beach. <laughs> Say, that looks like fate review at Hampton Roads. Yeah, ain't that beautiful? Moving nice and slow, just like ducks on a pond. Beautiful. Looks like the convoy, all right. Have they changed position? Yes, sir. They're moving south slowly. Off the coast unexplored. Be pretty rough getting in. Mm. All the chart tells us is that it's rocky. If we go in slow enough, we might find our way through. We never make it out the same way. Once we attack, they'll close in. We'll have to be moving fast. Nobody could recommend that you go in there, Captain. It's a big convoy. It's worth a big chance. Size targets are scarce these days. Put us on a course to go up ahead of them. Aye, aye, sir. What are you so happy about? Oh, I was just thinking about the old man. How can a guy be such a good Joe and hand out so much extra duty? <laughs> the barb slipped beneath the surface on a course towards the dangerously rocky coastline. Must be about 30 of them. We'll fire all torpedoes and haul out. Aye, aye, sir. The 
Barb slowly swung into position. Commander Flucky gave the order to fire a bow spread of six torpedoes. Fire! At eight second intervals. Six direct hits. Right full rudder, all ahead full, after torpedo room, stand by. Stern in position, Barb fired a spread of four more. Eight hits, carefully spaced, timed, and observed. A large freighter settled and sank. The big ship burst into shooting flames. One unidentified vessel rolled over on her side. In less than one minute, thousands of tons of Japanese shipping was laid useless. The barb couldn't take time to look back as she felt her way through the congested waters. The luck of the audacious was with her. We're clear, sir, passing over the 20 fathom curve now. Fine, fine. From here on, it's downhill all the way. Let's head for home. Surface. <laughs> weeks later, the barb steamed into Pearl Harbor. Our crew and officers were in high spirits. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get ashore, Jackie? Oh, I don't know. I hear they have a beautiful art museum here. You going to an art museum? No, but I hear it is beautiful. But what they didn't know was that Comp Sub Pack was to have disappointing news for them. What makes you think lifeguard duty isn't important? I didn't say that, sir. All I said was I got a bunch of wildcats on board who need more action. They won't sit still. Sounds like a cocky crew. Yes, sir, they are. I can understand why. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Gene. Bob's getting pretty old. We have faster and more modern boats for combat patrol now. Maybe so, Admiral, but I don't think there's a ship in the force with a barb spirit. You think that's the most important factor? Yes, sir, I know it is. I'm afraid I can't do it, Gene. I'll guarantee you a million dollars worth of damage. No. But, sir, I've got a plan to knock out shore installations. We can't do enough damage with one deck gun to make it very worthwhile. We could employ rockets. Rockets? What, a sub? Just because it's never been done, sir, doesn't mean it isn't possible. I didn't say it wasn't possible. Sorry, sir. But we know those shore installations better than we know the streets in Washington. With a full load of rockets, we could massage that shore Let me think about it. I'll also personally guarantee you at least 15 ships. Looks like you've got your heart set on another combat patrol. Hmm? Then you'll... I'll let you do one more war patrol, Gene. And with rockets. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, get out of here before I change my mind. Aye, sir. And thanks again, Admiral. We won't disappoint you. Have a good time on leave, Jackie? Yeah. Transfer orders from Com Sub Pack. See, I wonder who's getting transferred. None of your business. Take it to the yeoman's office. And keep your nose out of it! Yeah, all right. Subject transfer of enlisted personnel. Hmm. You are hereby ordered to transfer Potter, Jack, electrician, mate, took the house for a stable company transportation to, uh... Potter? Something wrong, Potter? Uh, no, sir, there's nothing wrong, sir. 
Well, cheer up. We'll be underway in a few hours. I'm sure we'll be able to find some extra duty for you. Loaded to capacity with electric torpedoes and all sorts of other ammunition, including a hundred rockets to inaugurate their assaults on Hokkaido. On June 8, 1945, the Barb departed on a final walk patrol. Captain, just broke an urgent message from Comsub Pack. Wants us to head for La Perouse Straits and raise the rumpus. I don't understand. Aren't Heidemann's Hellcats in there now? Seems they should have enough subs in his wolf pack to take care of the area. Means only one thing. They must be trapped in there. I guess they want us to draw all anti-submarine attention off of La Perouse Straits so they can get the wolf pack out. On June 21st, the Bob approached La Perouse Strait on the surface in the hopes of being sighted by Japanese patrol craft. like a playful porpoise, drawing all attention away from the wolf pack. At 17.36, Heidemann's Hellcats made their way safely out of the straits. The Barb had completed another successful mission. At 1950, the barb surfaced inside La Perouse Straits and manned battle stations. They set up the launches and loaded 12 five-inch rockets to pay their compliments. was highly successful, leaving the city of Shari badly damaged. Despite many countermeasures, the Barb fearlessly attacked the enemy at every opportunity. Determined to fulfill her promise of a million dollars worth of damage and at least 15 ships. By August 2nd, 1945, she had made good her promise. The aggressive Barb had made use of all torpedoes and rockets, adding many thousands of tons of shipping and four rocket assaults to a brilliant record. Just wanted to remind you, Captain, we haven't sent our report to Comsub Pack informing him that all our torpedoes are expended. I hadn't forgotten, Bill. But if we report now, he'll make us come home. There isn't much else we can do, is there, sir? You remember that military railroad train we saw along the coast inside Patience Bay? Yes, sir. I'd like to climax this patrol by blowing it up. We're clean as a hospital ship. There's not a bit of ammo aboard, except for scuttling charges. Yeah, I know. If only I'd saved just one rocket. Scuttling charges. That's it. I don't understand, sir. Each one carries a 55-pound charge of super-high explosives. We could rig a micro-switch to one of them, send a landing party on a beach at night, plant it under the tracks, and when the train passes through, bless your waterlogged head. Suppose we have to scuttle. We've got three charges, haven't we? I think we could blow ourselves up with two if need be. What's your honest opinion, Bill? My honest opinion, sir, is that it's absolutely ridiculous. But I'd like to make a request. What is it? Permission to leave the landing party. Permission granted. Thank you, sir. And this, my boy, is the proper way to do a fox trot. Man, it looks more like a turkey trot to me. <laughs> ah, you're just jealous. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
So what do you call a heart? Come in. Uh, sir, uh, I've been meaning to tell you that... Uh, uh, well, there were transfer orders for me before we left Pearl Harbor, sir, and I pocketed them so she wouldn't beach me. How'd you get your hands on them? I was supposed to deliver them to the yeoman's officer, and I... Uh, I guess I snaked a pig, sir. It figures. Yes, sir. You realize, of course, this is a serious offense. Well, I know, sir. And I, well, I was going to tell you after we got to sea, but well, I was afraid you put me off at Midway. You've got to be disciplined, you know that. Yes, sir. You're restricted to ship until we get to Pearl. Restricted to ship? Well, how can I get off at sea, sir? We're not through with war patrol yet. I'm sending a landing party inside Patience Bay. You were going to be an important part of it. Oh, well, that isn't fair, Captain. I could have climbed up till we got back. Too bad, Potter. Captain? Yes, sir. Looks like about 900 yards off the coast, Captain. Condition's perfect. No moon, heavy clouds. Right. Muster the landing party on deck. Replace Potter with Downey. I'll start briefing him right away. I thought you were in the landing party. The old man restricted me to the ship. All right, let's go over once again. Four men to a boat. Lieutenant Walker will lead the party ashore. One guard will proceed 50 yards up the track, another 50 yards down. The rest of the party will dig under the track and plant the battery and charge. Chief Saunders will test and adjust the micro switch on the firing circuit, then return to the boat. Well, sir, I, uh, I don't think I can handle a firing switch. Wasn't it clear when I explained it? No, sir, I think it should be handled by an electrician's mate. And uh, who do you think should do it? Potter, sir. Very well, get him. Yes, sir. Man, I've been trying to think of some soul-stirring message like synchronize your watches. But all I can think of is, if you get stuck, we'll come back for you every night. If we can't, follow the mountain ranges north and head for Siberia. Siberia? Shove off and God go with you. <laughs> your trip? Very funny. Look, you better let me take the lead. See, I'm not the most smart thing go by. No, I'm super... There's the railroad track, sir. Look out. Right out. You remember your whistle signals? Yes, sir. Bob White for assemble, the whipple wheel for alert. Right. Get going. Grow anything but bull rushes here, Mr. Walker. Look at that lousy soil. Never mind the soil, Potter. Just keep digging. No signal. No, I suit you. Probably our lookout. Nothing on earth but a scared American could run that fast. Don't shoot. 
What's up? There's a lookout tower about 100 yards up the track. Why didn't you whistle? Well, there's a guard asleep in the tower, and when I saw him, I, I got so scared my mouth dried up, I couldn't whistle. Come on, bear a hand. Sir, I can hear a train approaching. It won't fit. I'm gonna have to dig a little deeper. Come on, Dabby, don't jack dig. Clear the tracks. You're too close. Come on. Oh, oh they got me. Oh. Your carbon dioxide cartridge exploded. You ain't hurt, onion head. Come on! Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Hurry up! Only about another 30 seconds to a minute, she'll be on us. She's all set. Right, let's go. Take the first boat back. We'll wait here for another minute. We'd never get back there. They'll be closing in on the beach soon. Can't leave him now. He, he might still be alive. We've got to, Saunders. We'll spot that sub soon. There'll be curtains for all of us. You're right, sir. I'm sorry. Back in a moment with our special guest. I know you will be pleased to meet the Barb Skipper, Captain Eugene B. Flucky, who is now head of the Department of Electrical Engineering at Annapolis and the director of the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium Project. Gene, this 12th patrol of the Barb was certainly a model of ingenuity. Where did you get all those ideas? Tommy, we knew we had very little chance of finding any worthwhile targets for our torpedoes that late in the war. So we thought them up while we were sitting on our hands. The Barb stood three of all submarines in tonnage sunk, won the presidential unit citation, you were awarded the Medal of Honor, and still you tell me you had time to sit on your hands. Well, we had 80 of the finest men in submarines on board. They were always in a hurry. So sometimes we did sit on our hands, but I must admit it wasn't for very long. Congratulations to you for furnishing such fine leadership to this outstanding submarine. Thank you. I hope that you will be with us again for another true story of the silent service. Take her down, let off the line, through the deep blue, underneath the ocean. We'll control the ocean's wide, from down, down, underneath the sea. Oh, the past the world in the future, yeah.
Yeah. 